I'm Karen Spurzla, and I'm at the Maryland Sheep and Wool Fest uh, 2021 Virtual Festival. We're going to be talking to Susan Kessler Simpson, today the author of Overshot Simply and Shadow Weave Simply. Susan is an accomplished weaver and teacher of weaving and earned her bachelor's and master's degrees in textiles at the University of Nebraska. Welcome. Thank you. How did you get your start in weaving? Oh, that's kind of a funny story. I was raised on a dairy farm and I always wanted to, um, I always liked textiles. And, you know, back in that day, the, uh, we showed at the state fair, Indiana State Fair, which was huge deal for 4-H. And I always slipped over to the sheep barn, which was uh, not, it was a quiet thing that I did. There at the one end of the sheep barn, they had um, raw fleeces, they had looms, they had spinning wheels. And it always intrigued me. I wanted to know how to do that, but um, that was not something that I would, would have been allowed or could have afforded to do. So that was kind of a little bit of a pipe dream for me. Um, it wasn't until I learned how to spin um, in the early, early 80s, late 70s, early 80s. And um, I'm not a good spinner. I'm not an accomplished spinner. I do enough to um, demonstrate and I enjoy it. I find it very relaxing, but that's about the extent of that. But weaving didn't come until I was actually at the University of Nebraska. And that was a required class. And I was so excited um, to have that opportunity. And it just kind of, I went to college as a non-traditional. I was the I was the same age as the instructors, which is a, a unique and fun way to go to college. I will tell you that they can't pull the wool over your eyes. Um, you know, you you know exactly what they're talking about, and you can catch them. But so that's where I actually learned um, to weave. But then, you know, being in a college situation, things had to be set aside. Um, I did buy a loom, a used loom, and then when we moved to Pennsylvania, I went back to, I went to Manning's at the time and took a refresher course in, in weaving with Tom Nisley, and um, then it just kind of went crazy from there. But I've always had the interest in textiles, in fabric, I've quilted, I've knitted, I've crocheted, sewed like a crazy person, um, but right now the weaving is, is something that was always a dream and I'm very happy to be doing it. So what made you decide to write your first book then? <laughs> Tom. <laughs> um, if for those of you who know Tom, he can be quite the stinker and um, there are a lot of books being written that have a lot of words, no projects, very detailed, very um, clinical, I guess would be a way I'd put it. And I was doing weaving for Tom's books, his rug book and his baby uh, blanket book and stuff. And, um, you know, I said, Tom, I really enjoy these books because they have projects and they explain things simply. Why don't you write a book that kind of goes this direction that explains a weave structure simply and gives you projects to work with? Well, Tom got that usual smug look on his face and looked at me and he said, no, you do it. And I, uh, I like the cat. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> that's fine. And I, um, I just kind of thought, well, that's about the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And I came home and I told my husband what Tom said. And he looked at me and he said, so do it. Well, it kind of fermented in my head for a while. And I thought, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can, I'm going to start this. And um, one thing kind of led to another. It was a lot of fun taking a weave structure and bringing it down for the beginner, for the basics. Um, there's a book on Overshot by Ann Sullivan, which is tremendous. She's made, you know, it's kind of like she's made, wrote, um, overshot her lifetime. Rosalie Nielsen has done the same thing with rep weave. Personally, I don't want to do the same weave structure my entire life. Um, I want to branch out. But I found that there was this niche of people that needed to get those basics in. They don't want all this extra verbiage. They want to learn the basics and they want projects that are simple. And so that was why I started writing these books so that 
the person who has just done tabby weave can now read about overshot or shadow weave or anything else and they have a project they can do and be successful at it and if they want to go into depth on overshot then i say go to ann sullivan's book read that and go in depth with it but um, i just felt like this was a, a niche that needed to be filled were you already teaching when you yes. started this yeah i beginner I teach beginners very, you know, using the Deborah Chandler book, which is absolutely an awesome book, um, you know, and just teach people the basics on how to weave and, um, you know, getting through tabby weaves and through twills and a and little bit of the time. I like to, to do it in a, in a setting that's comfortable and relaxed and, you know, one or two people at a time is about ideal, although I've done up to eight, so. So before a beginner takes your the first book overshot simply what should they know what should they be comfortable doing on their own because this is this is distance learning if you will they should be able to dress a loom and weave tabby and okay. truthfully tabby is just a marriage between um or overshot is just a marriage between tabby and twill and that's really all it is um so i mean if they had a baby they call it overshot um, so if, if someone can, because I will tell you the first, when I took my first class in overshot, I was so excited because that is my favorite weave structure. I love the old coverlets. I hate the way they smell. I'd never use them, but I wanted to make it to do a coverlet. And um, so I took an overshot class and I was thinking this is going to be so complicated. And I sat down at the loom and it was explained to me and I thought, really? that's all it is why isn't there a book that states it in like this is what it is do this do this and you have it and um that was also an impetus for writing a book um, because i discovered that overshot was not that difficult and so if a person knows how to dress a loom and weave tabby that my books just give them the impetus to move forward just a little bit harder and it's not hard it's very simple is it sequential because your next your second book was shadow weaving and it's um shadow weave that book came about because um once again i had done some shadow weave and i wanted to do more i wanted to learn more about it there are no books there are uh, excerpts there are projects some not a lot nothing condensed into one book and that frustrated me. And I felt like this, this needs to be explained so that you could take a pattern that you like rose, uh, rose path or something and make it into a shadow weave pattern. Um, they explained ascending, they explained descending, they explained how to do the point. So in the process of I had again talked with Tom and I said, um, you know, I was doing this and he was excited for me. And, and this is one of the conversations we had was I said, okay, but Tom, sometimes the pattern is one, two, three, two, three, four, three, four, three, four, three, two, three, two, one. I said, nothing explains what to do in these odd sections. So I wrote out what I thought would be correct. And I asked him, is this right? thinking that Tom, you know, he should know all the answers, right? He looked at it and he said, yeah, that looks pretty good. And I realized that shadow weave was kind of this ignored um, situation. And so what I did was try to explain what to do in those sections and how to balance it and everything. So yeah, it's sequential, but you can now take a pattern and make it shadow weave. Not all patterns convert successfully to shadow weave, which is why I use Fiberworks, the weaving program, because I put everything into that. Even if I buy a book and it has a project in it, I will put that draft into um, Fiberworks because they make mistakes and have, being an author, man, that is tough. And I have mistakes in my book and it's, it's frustrating, um, but you know, it's just part of the process. It's very difficult to, to make it absolutely perfect. 
So yeah, Shadow Weave was an interesting challenge and it was a lot of fun to do that book. So what's your third book then? Well, I went back to Overshot and again, I blame Tom. Um, this is the cover or you can see the picture and it's backwards. <laughs> it's creative treadling with Overshot. And it kind of, once again, I was sitting, I was sitting at Tom's dining room table and um, he went to get something and he said, there's some papers there, take a look at those. So I was flipping through them and became very intrigued by what I was seeing. And um, then he gave me a book by Helene Bress, which was printed years ago, black and white, very difficult to read, very difficult to look at the pictures and decipher what she had done. But it basically is taking um, overshot as the threading, but treadling it using um, petty point or summer winter or totally different treadlings that normally would not go with overshot. And then he gave me a couple more, which one of them is just fascinating. It's completely reversible. One side has the over the same pattern on both sides, but one side will be one color and the other side will be a totally different color and they don't blend at all. So um, it's a little more difficult. All I can say is don't argue with it. Just do, you know, because I did that with Helene Press. I was reading this thinking this makes absolutely zip sense to me but I just took it at face value and it all works. So what I did was I warped the loom with a sample, long sample in um, Star of Bethlehem. And then I wove each, each of those uh, samples like summer, winter and everything um, in, over the, in Star of Bethlehem. And they're in the book so you can see how tr changing the treadling changes the image. So it was a lot of fun, you know, turn draft. Um, I did that one. I ran into a situation with the turned draft. I believe that was the one. And um, it didn't work. And so I asked my husband about it. And I said, why is this not working? And then he said, it has to do with modular mathematics. And I was like, oh, God help me. Um, but it didn't work. And then when he explained it, I understood what had to be done. So I showed it to Tom and he was like, I never have caught that. So we all learn in the process, but that's a great book. I mean, it's coming out and I, it's fun. It, it, a lot of the um, projects are more upholstery or they're heavier. And so there's a variety of methods that they're used, uh, some in chairs. I did a, a trifold screen, one side's one color, one side's another color. Um, just had a lot of fun with that book. And then there's a fourth book that'll be out fall, uh, some, I, I don't know when it's coming, and it's on Crackle Weave. Oh. And it's called Crackle Weave Simply. And, um, it just went into the publisher and will hit the pipeline someday. But again, it's taking Crackle Weave and simplifying it and giving um, about 25 projects, explaining Crackle Weave simply, very understandably, and then giving you 25 projects that you can do Crackle Weave. That is a, a weave structure that I think is often um, foo food. I think people look at that and go, I don't like that. It's too busy or um, I just don't, you know, but there's not a lot out there with Crackle Weave. There are two books on Crackle Weave and they're exceptional books, but they have a tremendous amount of words and no projects. And um, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm not a person to slog through lots of words. I like, <laughs> like going back to school again. <laughs> Well, again, it's, I don't, I have no intention of making any weave structure my life's goal. Um, I want, you know, and, and writing the books has allowed me to learn an awful lot. Um, you know, if you want to learn something, either write a book or teach it. And 
that is, you know, uh, my husband's mantra because he was a professor. And when I taught it at Nebraska, same thing. You know, if you want to learn something, teach it. And you have to immerse yourself into it. Um, so that's that's what I do. I love I love writing the books. I love doing the weaving for the books. Let's let's be real. <laughs> so have you done all the weaving yourself? Yes. The, the book? Absolutely. Um, I'm much more comfortable doing that because I might change my mind as I go along, or I might find that that isn't going to work. Or, you know, I did hand out a project one time. Oh, great. And um, it didn't didn't go well. So, um, and it was my fault. It wasn't the person's fault. It was mine. So um, I, it's easier for me to weave. So honestly, I don't even turn my things into the public. I don't even turn a proposal into the publisher until I have all the projects woven because their turnaround time wouldn't allow me to get the projects done. You know, the crackle weave, I turned that proposal in and they wanted everything in nine months. Well, it took me nine months to weave the projects so but it's fun so what would be a progression you know i'm a new new weaver i've done twill i've done the basic classes and i play around at home what should be my progression as i'm trying to learn new skills like you said not specialize in one technique or another do you have any recommendations no i mean i would try overshot because it's so beautiful and it, people are impressed with it. It looks very complicated. Um, but just, uh, you know, do you have the Marguerite Davison book? The green book? Yes, I do. Okay. Going in there, I mean, she doesn't do a lot of explanation, but she does have some pretty good graphs. And um, at least you can do projects. Uh, as far as learning different techniques who you know um madeline vandehoot has some books out but again they're very complicated they're very there's a book out and i have to tell you i won't tell you what book it is but i i actually went and took a brief workshop in this class because the comment was made did you get to page seven before you shut the book it's that complicated and i kind of chuckled when the in instructor said that and because I think I made it to page five. And when she explained it, I, it, again, it was that epiphany of like, seriously, they couldn't have explained it this way. So I would say, you know, if you have the overshot book, that's a good way to go. It's just, um, you know, a, a class is a good thing, but there's limits on what you'll learn. So it depends on how much you want to learn. I guess I was uh, asking, as it, since you're an instructor as well, is there, techniques that build on one another, like you should do twill first and then overshot next and then shadow weave? Not necessarily. I think it's more of where your interest goes. Okay. More of where your interest goes. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're intrigued by summer, winter, because they're all so different, they don't really build on each other. The, the overshot does kind of build on twill. That's about the only one I can think off of the top of my head, you know, but when you get into huck, that's a, totally different summer winters totally different they just they they all you know if you know how to do tabby you can do them all that, that gives me confidence yes sure you can as you were um coming up with your designs um do you swatch and how do you swatch <laughs> on a loom no <laughs> <laughs> sorry everybody no um i know you're supposed to do that and I have had a few fiascos, but not too many. Um, but then I've been working with textiles all my life too. Um, I know kind of what will work and what won't work. So, um, you know, I just, I just don't swatch. Got that. And I, the books are my records of what I make. People say, oh, do you keep records of everything you make? And it's like, oh, good gosh, no. You know, I mean... Um, I want to do the weaving. I don't want to boot, keep book, you know, reams of paper and swatches and samples. It's like, the thing is, I look at that and, and I, I, nobody wants, my kids aren't going to want it. And I'm not that, you know, I'm not going to go down to posterity as this 
famous weaver, so it'll just all go in the trash, and I have better things to do. <laughs> I'd rather weave. <laughs> Where do you come up with the inspirations for some of the, the projects that you've had in the books? There's a few that I just find. I can't wait to. Which ones? Um, one of them I can't do. It's the Christmas runner, because I, I have a full oh. room. Okay. Um, but boy, did I love that one. It is pretty, isn't it? But you know, you can take any of those other, the four shaft runners, change the colors to Christmas. Yeah. So you can still have a Christmas runner. Where do my, sh you know, um, it is a situation where um, it affects my sleep because I'll go to bed and I won't sleep because I have these ideas going around in my head. I, I really can't say that there's any one particular thing. Sometimes it might be um, some flowers in the backyard or I love the greens in the spring. You know, there's so many different greens and there was a couple pieces about that. But most of the time um, it just hits me. It's like, oh, I wonder what would happen if I did this? I think I'm gonna try this. So it just, you know, and I'll, I'll be up at night writing notes down because I'll, I have driven to Indiana to visit my family when they were still living, pulled over into a rest stop so I could write down a note because I had this idea. And like in the Overshot book, that checkers board piece, we were actually heading to Williamsburg for a short vacation. And I told my husband, we're driving along and, and I said, I need checkers. And he okay. And when we got to Williamsburg, we found those beautiful wooden checkers. And he didn't question, but all of a sudden it hit me. Squares, I could make a checkerboard. So yeah, I, they just kind of come out of the blue sometimes, which um, can be infuriating and exciting and yeah. So uh, again, because I am a new weaver, are there any tools or, or um, tools that you wish you had known about when you first started weaving that you couldn't possibly live without today? I loved that question. And I actually do have one and you're going to chuckle. It's this little hair clip. Ah. When I, my husband is, he does woodworking. So he's really, my loom is, when I die, someone's gonna get this really fancy adapted loom. But um, he made a, a piece of wood and we put cork board on it and it's attached to my castle. So I pin my treadling drafts. And this would be an example of my treadling draft. And it would be, and I usually break it down, one, two, three, two, three, four, whatever. So the phone rings or the cat jumps on my lap or someone comes to the door and I can put that clip and know exactly where I am. And when I move down, I just move my clip. I'll do, you know, I say, okay, now I knew one, two, three, I do one, two, three and move my clip, two, three, four, move my clip. So I never get lost. And the other thing I like to do is, especially in overshot, when I start a motif, because some of them are quite long, I will put a, a straight pin there that has a bright head on it. At the very beginning, I'll, I may weave a couple of shots and then I put that straight pin there. So if I get to the end of that and I've gotten confused, I've gotten lost, I know that's all the farther I have to go back. Okay. Because everything before that was okay. Because I do that. Um, I'll be weaving and my mind will wander. I'll get an idea and think, oh, I, and then I forgot where I was. I forgot to move my hair clip. But that silly little hair clip. I mean, when I go take a class, I take my hair clips. And it's, it's not really a weaving tool, but it has been uh, heaven sent to me because it helps me keep where I am. I'm going right to my bathroom and pulling one out and bringing it downstairs. <laughs> it is, it's crazy, but it works. Um, I know you have all three. Well, you have, you showed us the copy of your, the, the right paper with the, the, the newest or the next that's book. Overshot. And that's Shadow Weave. And then this is the creative treadling. That's just a piece of paper right now, but it's. So where can someone find the, the first two books that have already been published? They're all on uh, Amazon. 
and the creative treadling is there for um, pre-order. It is listed now. So they are all on Amazon. I will ask though, and I'm going to say this a couple, you know, my email is D S I M P S U E D S I M P S U E at AOL.com. If you buy one of my books, please send me an email with a, in the header, uh, wrote, bought a book or something, because there are some errors in the first book and, and there's one in the second one. And I, I don't want anybody to get into that and then say, well, pfft, you know, I apologize for those. And some people are, are, are very rude about the fact that I made mistakes. And, um, you know, but I'm learning too. And those charts kind of make your eyes cross sometimes. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of numbers and a lot of moving parts as it were. Well, unfortunately, uh, <clears throat> the um, part of the problem too is, you know, the people I work with at Stackpole um, are very beginning weavers. So they don't always catch them either. Uh, but the proofreader that they have right now, she, I don't know who she is, but she's wicked. He, she's wicked. And they caught things that we all missed. So hopefully third book, fourth book, will all get better in time. But even with two of us, me proofing it and another Weaver friend proofing it, those mistakes slip through. So it's just life. But it's D-S-I-M-P-S-U-E D -S -I -M -P -S -U -E at AOL. So. Well, thank you very much. We don't want to take it... Um too much of your time, but we appreciate you uh, being here with us um, for the virtual festival. Yeah, hopefully one of these days we'll be able to get back together again. This is crazy. Hopefully next year. I'm hoping so. I miss Maryland sheep and wool. I miss the chaos and the people and all the pretty yarns and everything that's out there. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I enjoy teaching weaving and, and uh, once things clear up, people can contact me. I'd love to come to guilds and talk to guilds and share. Um, my husband and I do a lot of traveling and we've been, um, I'm doing some programs on our trips to Kenya and Finland and I travel so I can get fabric. <laughs> I'll be on. I can on my trip, so I, I understand <laughs> that. Well, when we were in Finland, um, we took a class on Rhea weaving, and my husband actually fell in love with that. I wasn't so crazy about it. And hopefully a year from May, we'll be going to Peru to take a class with Hector Serco on tapestry weaving. So, yeah. Well, that sounds fantastic. It's great. Thank you so great. much for being with us. No problem. Thank you for asking.